the start of our special series where we will focus on the biggest issues facing Britain at the general election. Our investigations editor, Daniel Hewitt, will report on the top five issues which have been identified by the polling company Ipsos. According to the monthly survey, the NHS is number one, with 35% of people saying healthcare is the most important issue this election. Inflation and prices, otherwise known as cost of living, the economy, immigration and housing. Well, in our first instalment, Daniel looks at the problems facing England's NHS and heard from hospital staff, GPs and some of those who say the system is broken. One woman told us how her 59-year-old partner, Julian Martin, died after waiting more than 90 minutes for an ambulance. And a warning that Daniel's report contains images of Julian's collapse at home, which his partner wanted us to show. If you're doing a check on the NHS right now, what state do you think it is in? I think if the NHS was a patient, it'd be in a critical condition. Do H1. We used to talk about winter pressures in the NHS, and now winter is a 12-month period. There's no end to the constant waiting. Because ambulances should not be sat outside hospitals when people are dying. We will give you a call back to the range of time at the surgery. We used to be able to ring up in the morning and get an appointment that day. But now it's almost like a game, it's like a battle. If you don't hit the phone straight away, you've got no chance. Is the NHS ready to look after a frail, elderly population? I don't think it is. Oh, sorry, I'm just getting a pain in the chest. We hope the NHS will be there when we need it. Oh. In Chester, Julian doesn't know it yet, yeah. but he's having an aneurysm near his heart and needs the NHS now and fast. Oh. He calls 999 and messages his partner Leslie, who rushes home from work. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't look too good. I'm home now. What follows is captured by a camera yeah. they install to check on their pets. No, that, that is going down. Julian is now lying on the floor. Leslie calls 999 again and again. He's, he's, he's quite ashen coloured, so... Oh. And sweating. Okay. Right now, every second counts. But as the minutes pass, the ambulance is nowhere to be seen. No legs. No, they, they're completely, you can't move them and you can't feel me pinching no them. No legs. And he's just Leslie's to trying to stay calm. And as day turns to night, eventually paramedics arrive, an hour and a half after Julian first called, and he's taken to hospital. We went straight into the hospital, into the resource area. And Julian said he felt sick. And I'm arm round him and reassured him. Then he said he felt faint. And then he died. Julian was 59. Leslie wanted us to use the footage to show the reality of what he went through. I'm angry that an amazing, wonderful man never had the opportunity to fight for his life. I miss him dreadfully and I feel that everybody who dealt with him that day failed him. Our health service is broken. Northwest Ambulance Service said their sincere condolences go to Julian's family and they will meet with Leslie soon to discuss the findings of their investigation. Ambulance response targets in England are consistently being missed. In January, the average time for heart attack symptoms was 40 minutes, more than double the target of 18, as patients struggle to get into A&E departments. We've come to Ipswich General Hospital. Fred, hello. The number of patients attending A&E is up 25% in five years. Why is he so drowsy? And it shows. Two things quickly become clear. Patients have nothing but praise for those caring for them. The staff on the ward have been absolutely brilliant. I mean, I can't fault them. I'll be glad to get on to some proper food, though. <laughs> I mean, sort of the nurses, the doctors, they definitely need more money. Mm. They need something. But they are overrun. The demand 
unrelenting. I'm struggling to recruit consultants because I, I think sometimes they look at us and think, I'm not sure I want to do that with my life. It certainly feels as bad as it, as, as it ever has been in my experience. The COVID pandemic, industrial action, trying to see if we can cover as many things as we can with a dwindling number of staff. Waiting time has been getting longer and longer by the day. David has been living in this small cubicle for four weeks. He needs a heart operation, but at another hospital, and there's the ever-growing waiting list. You know, I can't say that I blame anybody for it, other than the fact that NHS can't cope. Is that, is that your conclusion? And nothing wrong with the people in it, it's just that they don't have the facility. In truth, I don't think the NHS can continue to, to soak up the huge demand that we're seeing. The NHS was designed in 1948. Life expectancy was 68. We do need to see whether or not the NHS is fit for purpose. Now we need planning for the next, for the next generation and not for the next election. Good morning, please. surgery. 300 miles north, this Lancashire GP surgery is prescribing similar warnings. They are seeing more patients because more are living in pain, waiting for hospital treatment, like Mike, who has arthritis. I've lost all the strength in my hands, I can't even, this is how serious it is, I can't even open a can of beer. <laughs> and Phil, who's just had a knee operation that he had to wait more than a year for. Nice to meet you, this I'm is Dan, Dan. Way. nice to meet you, how are you? So Phil uh, was supposed to have his uh, post-op check at the hospital, uh, okay. but they're so busy that they weren't able to fit him in. Six and a half thousand people rely on this surgery. But Dr. Janjua says he's had a real terms cut in funding per patient in the last five years. You're going to start seeing more and more practices closing. We'd be lucky if we have uh, general practice as we know it uh, within a couple of years, unless things change dramatically. Patients are sleepwalking into uh, a disaster where the future looks very, very privatised. I know in a place like Fleetwood, it's a deprived area. Most people can't afford to go private. Public support for the NHS is unwavering, but faith is faltering in its capacity to cope. By any measure, it's under pressure like never before. Daniel Hewitt, ITV News. So just some of the issues facing England's NHS. So what do the main parties say they'll do about it? My health correspondent Rebecca Barry is here to guide us through their policies. Rebecca. Yeah, public satisfaction with the NHS has fallen to its lowest level ever recorded. So whichever party wins this election faces some huge challenges. Health is a devolved issue for the four nations in the UK. We're focusing on England because Westminster has responsibility for the NHS there. First up, the waiting list. Millions of people are waiting for non-urgent operations. Things like knee replacements and cataract surgery. Latest NHS England data shows the backlog reached 7.5 million at the end of March. So what are parties promising to do about it? Well, cutting NHS waiting lists was one of Rishi Sunak's top five priorities. And while the backlog has fallen by 200,000 since September, the waiting list remains higher now than when he first made that pledge. Labour's promised to clear it within five years with more evening and weekend appointments and using the private sector, paid for by a crackdown on tax avoiders. Meanwhile, the Liberal Democrats say that they'd invest in public health and prevention so that fewer people get ill and need treatment in the first place. Another major issue, staff shortages, stretching resources and affecting morale. The NHS in England has more than 100,000 jobs unfilled. That's almost 7% of the workforce. The Royal College of Nursing says almost half of its members are currently planning or considering quitting. The Conservatives have delivered on their 2019 manifesto pledge to hire 50,000 more nurses, but unions say that's still not enough to meet demand. Labour's promised to create 7,500 more medical school places and 10,000 more nursing and midwifery placements a year. While Reform UK say they'd uh, retain workers by cutting taxes for frontline NHS staff and writing off student fees for trainee doctors and nurses. Finally, the struggle to get a GP or a dentist appointment. NHS data shows that in April, more than three million people had to wait more than three weeks to see their GP. Meanwhile, there's a crisis in NHS dentistry with tooth decay, the number one reason for hospital admissions for young children. 
the Conservatives say that they would incentivise dentists to take on NHS patients, build 100 new GP surgeries in England and expand the use of pharmacies. Labour says that it would end that 8am scramble for appointments by using the NHS app and deliver 700,000 extra dentistry appointments a year. While the Green Party say that they would ensure that everyone can see an NHS doctor or dentist by raising money through a fairer tax system. And on top of all that, Lucrezia, there is the ongoing industrial action with junior doctors walking out just days before the election and even GPs now threatening to take action. So it is a daunting to-do list. Mm. Rebecca, thank you.